Now is our time to practice some of these homogeneous equations, or solving by homogeneous substitution. So we have these differential equations. We know they don't fit a particular technique that we've learned, so we're trying to substitute to make that happen. Last video, I gave you a couple introductory examples. This time, man, we're going to crush some examples. There's about seven of them that we're going to do, and <laughs> some of them are just brutal. And so I'm trying to give you the hardest ones I could find, or create, or recreate um, to give you those those cases where it they're very difficult. Now I also said, so, said something in the last video that sometimes some of these equations can be solved at least one other way and so in in a few videos from now I'm going to show you that. So while some of these look just extraordinarily hard we go wow can't there be a better way to do this? Maybe but I'm giving you at least a fallback, like, hey, here's homogeneous equations. This is what you could do with this. And also, you know me, I'm trying to get you to practice some of the old techniques that way they're in your head. So you're never forgetting them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's look at this one. So we got x plus y dy dx equals x minus y. And with, with these substitution techniques, they're only used if you can't make it into something you already know how to do. It's like, hey, could you take a basic integral? Well, no. Could you write this as uh, a separable equation where we can separate the variables? No. Is it linear? Doesn't look like it. Can you make it homogeneous? And that's what we're going to do. This is similar to one of the examples in the last video, uh, but it has a different technique on, on doing the, uh, the integration. So we're going to start here, something basic, just to get our brains working on what this is again, and then we'll start some harder examples. So number one, let's try to make this into that form of solving for dy dx, and let's see if we can make it homogeneous or at least fit the form of it. We saw this in one of the previous examples. Like, um, that doesn't look great, but remember what we're trying to do with homogeneous. With homogeneous equations, what we're trying to do is we're always trying to structure it so that every instance of y is divided by x. That gives us a very nice substitution. If you have not watched the last video, you need to watch that because I'm not going through and explaining this whole technique again. We spend uh, an hour doing that. Right now, we're just practicing. So the technique says, yes, you can create this y over x every place you have y. Let's just divide everything by x. If we divide every single term by x, which means we're multiplying 1 over x times 1 over x and we're distributing, that's what's really happening mathematically. What it's coming down to is, if we divide everything by x, well then what we get is 1 minus y over x, hey, that's what I'm looking for, over 1 plus y over x, that's also what I'm looking for. I want to structure this, if I'm going to use this technique, with every case of y has to be a fraction y over x. We need to make sure we're getting rid of all of the y's. You may not have y's and x's and v's are substitutions. So we're grouping all of this so that we have y over x. That lets us make a really convenient substitution. We explored why we want that in the last video, but if we have v equals y over x, that's going to be a v, that's going to be a v, but this little y over here has also got to go. Well, that's where this substitution comes in handy. Because if I solve this for y, and we do a derivative implicitly, we get dy dx equals, by the product rule that we have here based on implicit differentiation, we get x dv dx plus v. Now we're going to make sort of a two-part substitution. Yeah, we're going to call that v. Yeah, we're going to call that v. But also, because we made this really convenient substitution, because we were able to take a derivative by solving for y, we now get that dy dx, these are the same dy dx's. dy dx equals this piece. Let's substitute for all of them. So left-hand side is going to become this. In textbooks, it looked like magic. Like where did they come from? But here we have dy dx equals here. Some do a great job, but some just kind of leave you hanging equals this, so dy dx is equal to dv, x times dv dx plus v. On the right-hand side, so this is that derivative, same exact thing. That's why we get to replace it. On the right-hand side, we still have a 1, we still have a minus, but now we're grouping that y as y over x, that becomes our v, and 1 plus v. 
So let me let me double check. Something we knew how to do? No. Maybe we can structure for substitution. Let's try homogeneous. Let's group this so we have dy, dx, and everything on the right-hand side. Let's see if we can make all of our y's of the form y over x. Oh, divide everything by x. Okay, let's substitute. Let's call this a letter. Let's call it a v, a variable. All right, so v equals y over x, no problem. Oh, we also need to solve for dy, dx. Let's solve for y, let's take a derivative. dy, dx is now based on x's and v's. Our y's are now based on v's. That's our substitution. And then what this has done is this, this has created a differential equation that's based on a different variable. Yeah, that variable is still x's and y's, but it creates something that hopefully we can do with a separable equation or something else that we know how to do. So let's try. Let's try to get rid of this v. We want to make sure all our v's are together for separable equations, so let's try to do that. Hmm, in order to combine those, we're going to have to have a common denominator, so let's go ahead and let's make that, make that happen. So our LCD here is this 1 plus V. So 1 minus V minus V times 1 plus V all over 1 plus V. That was our common denominator. I know that I never want to distribute this in my head because I'm, I'm used to, I, I don't want to mess up that second sign. So when we distribute, we do it from here, and we get x times dv dx equals 1 minus v minus another v, those do not cancel, minus v squared. All over 1 plus v. All right. Uh, oh, wow. What now? Well, let's simplify. Well, if we do that, you know, I really don't like the way this looks. Now, when we try to factor and do substitutions, most of the time it's nice to have that in order. It's nice to have the first term positive. So, what if, we, what if we just factored out that negative? So if we factor out the negative here, we get a positive v squared, a plus 2v, and a minus 1. Let's, let's double check that. Factor the negative, all the signs change. Have a negative out front. Oh, now it looks pretty good. You're like, that didn't look good. Well, it looks good as far as being a separable equation because we have these v's on one side we can make on the left-hand side. We have the x on the left side we can put on the right-hand side with our dx. Let's do that. Let's move this to the left. We'll have to reciprocate. Remember what we'd be doing? We'd be multiplying by v plus 1. We'd be dividing by this expression. And then we'd be dividing by x. We're also going to leave any constants, which includes negatives, on the right-hand side. Uh, it works a little bit better that way. So let's try that. So moving this all around, structuring our v's on the left, dv, our x's on the right, dx, we'd have v plus 1 multiplied by the reciprocal over v squared plus 2v minus 1. We're going to keep that dv. On the right-hand side, so we, let's see, we moved that, we kept the dv. Let's divide by x. Let's move our dx. And let's make sure that we don't forget that negative. It's so easy to lose negatives. I do it sometimes. It happens. But let's just be real careful. I'm always going back and double-checking my work. So do I have my v plus 1 on the numerator? Yeah. Do I have this exact expression, no sign changing on the denominator? Yeah. With my dv, okay. Did I divide by x? I got that. Did I leave my negative? I got that. And I moved my dx. Now we're ready for an integral. So when we integrate both sides, on the left-hand side, don't make these harder than they have to be. It's so common for people to just assume they're going to be brutal. Sometimes they are. We're going to get some of those today. Um, but sometimes they're not. So when you look at this, try a substitution first. 
if you take the u equals the denominator, can you simplify the numerator? The answer is yeah, you can. Because if we take u equals v squared plus 2v minus 1, and we do a derivative, and we factor out 2, and we divide by 2, Sorry, I messed up. That should be BB. Well, then we get du over 2 equals v plus 1 dv. And that's exactly what we have right there. So we looked at it and we thought, man, that doesn't look great. But let's try some simple stuff first. Let's try separating the fraction. Eh, that's not something I want to do because a substitution won't work. And I don't want to go any harder than that. Let's try a basic substitution. Okay, well, if I take my denominator as u, then 2u plus 2v plus v, uh, 2, we can factor out the 2, and we get that du is 2 times v plus 1 dv. Let's divide by 2. Then v plus 1 dv, exactly what my numerator is, is equal to du over 2, and that's a nice substitution. So on the left-hand side, we have this whole piece. This is gone. That's 1. Over, you called this whole thing u. That's really nice. And then we have this piece, this v plus 1 dv is equal to du over 2. Man, that looks a whole lot better than what we started with. On the right-hand side, we still have a negative. We still have an integral, 1 over x dx. Now let's go ahead and do our integration. So on the left-hand side, we get 1 half ln absolute value u. On the right-hand side, negative ln absolute value of x, and yeah, we got a plus c. Now, what else do we want to do with it? Uh, well, we got to at least substitute back in for u, so this needs to become this piece. And now we have a couple other things that we can do. Number one, well, I probably would multiply everything by 2 uh, because I don't like that 1 half. I don't want to deal with square roots. So let's multiply both sides by 2. Right-hand side multiplying everything by 2 is going to distribute. I know I'm going to be changing that constant now. <sighs> let's get as close as we can to solving for v. Let's take both of these sides as an exponent on that e, so to get rid of our lns. On the left-hand side, remember what's going to happen here. I'm going to show all of this at one time. What's going to happen is we'll put an e here and an e on that entire side. Well, on the left-hand side, that's fine. We'll get absolute value v squared plus 2v minus 1. On the right-hand side, you have exponents added together. What that means is that we can have e to the first term times, if exponents are added together, they came from common bases being multiplied, e to the first term times e to the second term. So that's what we're going to get. So e to the ln gone, v squared plus 2v minus 1 at absolute value looks good, e to the first term times e to the second term. The only reason why I didn't cross this out, I want you to see what happens in the negative 2. That negative 2 is an exponent, so let's move that. If we do move that, then the absolute value of v squared plus 2v minus 1 doesn't change. But on the right-hand side, I'm going to move this, that would be 
x to the negative second power times e to, well, let's do this, times e to the 2c1. Now, absolute values. Let's group all of the idea of absolute value. Remember, it's either plus or minus, that idea. Let's drop those, and let's group that idea onto this constant. So plus or minus e to the 2c sub 1 times x to the negative 2. Now we're going to say this whole thing. Let's just call that a constant. And we can even do this, really, if you think about it. We can do this over x squared. Because that's a negative exponent. No problem. Just a couple more things we got to do. Do you know what we got to do? Hopefully you understand what we're doing here. Um, we have this in terms of v. So, long problem. These take a while. Some of these are just brutal. But we said, can't do it regularly. Try a homogeneous substitution, or a homogeneous equation. Let's make a substitution. We did that. We have something that we have as separable equations. We've solved our integrals for term of v and x, but now we got to go back to y's. So every place you saw y, it was y over x, made v. Now every place you see v, that's got to be replaced with y over x. So here we're going to get this y over x squared 2 times y over x. Minus 1 equals c over x squared. If we simplify just a little bit, this will be y squared over x squared. Plus 2y over x minus 1 equals c over x squared. Let's just multiply everything by x squared. So we're going to get some simplification. If we multiply x squared, x squared, x squared, and x squared, then we'll get y squared. Plus, if we multiply by x squared, one of the x's will cancel, one will not. 2xy minus x squared. Remember, we distribute by multiplying on both sides. On the right-hand side, we just get c. Nasty? Yeah, kind of. Uh, some of these problems aren't all that, that nice, but what's just amazing is substitutions work for us a lot of the time. And we can solve some of these differential equations that otherwise we'd be like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do on that. Um, so that's that's the idea. Substitutions make them a little bit more possible. I hope this makes sense. I hope you're seeing the idea of homogeneous equations. I told you that we're not going to shy away from some really hard problems. You got the easy ones in the last video. So if you need, if you haven't watched that, you really should, because this might seem like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? These are going to be the more difficult examples I'm giving you here. So the ideas were in the last video. Now we're just putting them into practice. So we have got like six more examples. It's going to be a long video. Hang on. Let's start our next one. So same ideas. Again, this is a section on homogeneous equations. So obviously we're going to go ahead and do all those. Uh, I will say one more time that some of these examples can be done a different way. And we're going to get to those. And when we do, uh, hopefully I'll kind of reference some of them as we're going through that. Um, so let's try this one. <sighs> Anything we look that looks like we know what we're doing, not, not so much. Can we make it homogeneous? Well, what that involves is structuring everything with x's and y's on one side, rewriting all the y terms as y's over x's. So let's, let's do that. So when we divide both sides by x times x plus y, kind of similar to the last problem in that we have this idea, we're going to do the same thing, where we have x minus y over x plus y, but this right here, this is already what we want to do, so don't be distributing that. You'll, you'll have to undo it anyway. So if you have the y over x and you're trying to make this a homogeneous equation, or the form of a homogeneous equation, we'll leave that. So we can look at this as y over x times whatever this is. Now we can divide each of these terms by x. And that's exactly the technique we've used a couple of times. So let's leave the first y over x. 
let's divide everything in this fraction by x. That's 1 minus y over x. Remember the idea, we're always trying to get every instance of y divided by x, and we have it. We have it 1, 2, 3 times. That's when we make our substitution. So now we can say, okay, let's call v. Let's call this y over x equal to v. What also happens is that if we solve for y, so here's our substitution. If we solve for y, well, then we can take a derivative. And that lets us substitute for our dy dx. Product rule with a chain rule. So a derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is 1. Let's make our substitution. Hopefully you can do that right now. So if you're, this takes some, some work and you might not be there yet. But from here, you should be able to make your substitution. So dy dx, dy dx is now this junk right here. Hopefully you've noticed this, but in these homogeneous equations, dy dx always changes to that. So your left-hand side, always. Why? Because you're always the same substitution. Why? Because you're always trying to make y over x. It gives you the same substitution. It gives you the same derivative. It gives you the same dy equals this. So always the same. On the right-hand side, man, we got a lot of these. So dy dx, I replaced it. y over x, I replaced it with v. y over x, I replaced it with v. y over x, I replaced it with v. Normally, I show these in parentheses to show that this is what I'm replacing. Do you have to? Not really, but for me, it's a nice little organizer in my head that this is what I'm doing. Oh, man. Well, we're probably going to want to move that v to the right-hand side and see if we can make one fraction. Our idea is let's try to structure this like a separable equation, separate our variables. So if we subtract, we get v times 1 minus v over 1 plus v minus another v. So we subtract v on both sides. Well, we're going to need a common denominator, aren't we? If we get a common denominator just like last time, exactly like last time, we'd multiply it by the other denominator. Denominator share no factors, we're gonna have to do that. So left hand side, we get x dv dx. No problem, that looks really good. Right hand side, we have all on the numerator. We have v times one minus v minus v times one plus v. Now, there's a mistake right now, and it's really common, and it's an algebra mistake. A lot of people uh, will, will do this and say, oh, well, um, you, you've got, well, let me say it a different way. It'd be an algebra mistake if we did something like this. That's what I want to see. I, I didn't make a mistake, sorry, I, I undid my own mistake. But when we're grouping this, this fraction right here, this has a v on the numerator already. When we get a common denominator, you don't need to distribute that. So this v didn't come from here. This v was our minus v that we had. When we multiply by that, that denominator, we create this common denominator, we create one fraction. This v does not need to be distributed here. It's it's not the same idea as multiplying. You're just subtracting a fraction. That v was already on the numerator. That v should have already had parentheses. Do not distribute to the second fraction. See it sometimes when we go so fast, you make a little algebra mistake. So don't do that. Please don't do that. So what could we do? Uh, well, we could just distribute everything and see what happens. Um, we could factor out a v and then simplify it. Either way you want to go. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. So let's... Give it a try. V minus V squared minus V minus V squared all over 1 plus V. So if we simplify, we're going to get our X. Not a problem. DV, DX looks pretty good. Right-hand side, Vs are gone. 
negative 2v squared when you combine like terms over 1 plus v. That at least looks a little bit better. Now, I've got my v's wrapped up in one fraction. I've got my x over here. Let's switch those. Let's keep the negative 2 on the right-hand side. We're going to keep our, our coefficients that are constants, like the negative 2 on the right-hand side. We'll move our 1 plus v and our v squared, so we're going to have the reciprocal, dv. We'll have negative 2 over x dx, so we're going to move that stuff around. What we're trying to do is we're trying to group all of our v's on one side, dv. All of our x's on the other side, dx. So we're always trying to get the separation of variables here to work for us. So multiply by the reciprocal, got that dv, we kept our negative 2 over x, and now we can integrate. Right hand side, not a big deal. Left hand side, well, let's run through it. Can you solve it by separating the fractions? Yeah, let's do that. Without any, there's, it's not a u sub, it's nothing, anything fancy. Just separate our fractions there. So we've done that. Maybe we simplify a little bit. Maybe so it looks nicer for us. So instead of 1 over v squared, let's do v to the negative 2. Plus 1 over v. And we got that all dv. And then negative 2 absolute value integral of 1 over x dx. It's going to be absolute value x. Let's just go ahead and do that. So we've got an integral of v to the negative 2 power. Not a problem. We're going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus integral of 1 over v, ln v. Right hand side, we keep the negative 2. ln absolute value of x plus c. We're actually almost done. Uh, so when we do go ahead and simplify just a little bit, oh, looks like we're going to have. Um, sorry. Yeah, negative 1 over v. Get it. Plus ln absolute value v equals negative 2 ln absolute value of x plus c. Oh man, what else can we do? Um, Well, we could just multiply everything by, oh wait, here's an idea. What if we took, what if we took and moved this to the left-hand side? That way, we have our LNs together. And what if we took and moved this to the right-hand side? That way we have our stuff that's not LNs over there. So the idea is, remember those, those exponent rules that you can do? Or, oh, sorry, natural log rules. If you have natural logs being multiplied, you can, you can combine them. So let's try that. Let's move this to the right side, this to the left side. All right. Oh, what else could we do? Maybe we move this as an exponent. Right hand side stays the same. Maybe we can combine those. Do you remember what happens when you have logarithms being added together? That you create a product inside one logarithm? Well, that's about as good as we're going to get um, before, unless we start using some exponentials, which I don't want to do. Um, so let's plug in our y. So we know that v was equal to y over x. Let's do that again. So if we do v equals y over x, then we'd have ln y over x times x squared.
equals 1 over v. So 1 over y over x plus c. Now, a couple other people might have wanted to do this like, well, v, let's make v to the negative 1. So if v to the negative 1, we'd have y over x. But then to be the negative 1 power, we would reciprocate that. So x over y. Same thing happens here. 1 over y over x, that's the same thing as x over y. So right-hand side, we're going to get x over y plus c. Left-hand side, we have some simplification. We know that x squared over x just gives us x. Feels like we're on a roll. Let's keep on going. So we have another one, and we're looking at it going, that does not look very good. There's an E up there. What in the world do we do with that? Well, look at the exponent of the E. Sometimes these substitution techniques almost give themselves away. So when you have Y over X, you go, I get dipped. I'm not going to get rid of that. Well, that's kind of begging you to do a homogeneous, make this into that homogeneous form of, of the differential equation. So we do the substitution, v equals y over x. It's almost just asking you for that. So let's see if that works. Let's divide both sides by x squared to try to get this in the form. Remember, the form we want is dy dx equals a whole bunch of stuff where every instance of y is divided by an x so that our substitution works. Let's try that. So when we divide by x squared, well, we simplify, and it, it almost gives itself up for free. So that's kind of nice. Some of these examples, or some of these problems, just sh almost show you what to do. It says, that's, that looks really similar to a substitute. That is a substitution we've been doing before. Let's try to make everything else fit that. So we solve for dy dx, we simplify what we can. And now we see that every instance of a variable y is also divided by an x. That is our substitution. Let's make y equal to that. I'm oh, sorry, v. Let's make v equal to that. If we solve for y, it allows us to go ahead and do a derivative. based on a product rule and a chain rule and get something that we can replace not only y over x, so v, v, but now dy dx is this whole piece right there. dy dx replace it so that our left hand side looks like this we've got that right hand side this is now v e is still there but raised to the v power now this is pretty nice we saw this a couple times on on the last video but if you subtract v this happens occasionally happens quite a bit uh, when you're going through all of your examples Sometimes your V's cancel. That's great. Does it look like it's separable? Can you group your V's on one side DV and your X's on the other side DX? That's what it looks like to me. If I multiply both sides by E to the negative V or divide by E to the V, change your exponent, we're going to get E to the negative V DV Divide by x. That's 1 over x dx. Man, this problem looked a lot harder than it is, and sometimes that happens. If you get the right substitution or use the, the appropriate one, there are some that work, some examples you can work it in two or three different ways, but sometimes it, one will be just really nice. In this case, that's what gave it away. That's, that's really nice for a homogeneous if I can write the other y's in that form, and we can. So once we get it down to here, we've separated our variables. Let's do an integral. The way that e to the function of x works is you get the you get that uh, that function back again, divided by the derivative of your exponent. That's just negative. So negative e to the negative v equals ln absolute value of x plus c. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well. Let's see, what else can we do? 
I don't like that negative. Let's multiply everything by a negative. Call that c sub 1. That way we might change it later. Looks pretty good. Um, what else can we do? Well, we <laughs> it's going to be kind of awkward, but could we take an ln of, of everything? We could. Uh, we could do ln b e to the negative b equals ln negative ln absolute value of x minus c sub 1. Let's do a couple of things with this. Number, number one, let's eliminate this. This is a composition of inverse functions, so that's going to be gone. We'll get negative v. On the right-hand side, I'm going to do two things inside that bracket. I'm going to move this negative as an exponent. I know that that means that's going to be 1 over x. I'm also going to change this minus c sub 1 to plus c. So remember that that's an arbitrary constant. So if I define c equals negative c sub 1, then I can write this as plus c. And if you're getting a lot of problems on your, your homework or your practice, go, where, where's the sign coming from? Why am I not getting that? Then I'd be wrapping up a negative inside of another arbitrary constant. Now, we have one last thing to do. That v, that v is representing y over x. Let's change it back. And if we multiply both sides by negative x, get a really awkward looking answer, but I mean, it's not, not horrible, I suppose. So we have this negative x ln, ln of absolute value, 1 over x uh, plus c. You might see it differently. So I wrote this my way, but you might see this differently. I, I'm going to show you from right, from right here. Imagine you didn't do that negative 1. Imagine you didn't do this as ln 1 over x, which is one reason why we're doing this example, to show you you can get several different looks here. Well, if you consider this to be that, so I still wrap this up as the c, but I left the minus alone. I left the negative one, it's going to become a minus. Well, then when you solve this, negative y over x equals ln c minus ln x, and you multiply both sides by negative x, you get something that looks fairly different. You go, those don't look the same. They're, they don't look the same, but they are the same. Using some of those logarithms, and when we get logarithms, you know that you can get several different looks for it. So whether you get this or that doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to see this probably more often than not because people try to avoid um, those fractions inside natural logarithm, inside logarithms. But I wanted you to see both of those, that those are equivalent answers just by structuring the problem a little bit differently. Anyway, the fundamental idea is, hey, if you've got a substitution you can make and it's really apparent, try it. Is it always going to work? No, but there's a good chance that it will. Let's move on to another problem. All right, moving on. So we have another example. Uh, we've got a differential equation. It doesn't look like anything that we're used to seeing, like, uh, well, now we're kind of used to seeing Home Genius. But it doesn't look like anything we're used to seeing as far as direct separable equation or linear or something else that we've done, like basic integrals. Um, so we might start trying homogeneous because that's all we know. And we're going to. I'm going to show you that. But I want to say right from the beginning that there is at least one other technique that we can use here. It's called an embedded derivative. At least that's what I call it. It's an embedded derivative where the function of y and the derivative of the function of y is also in your equation. So I want you to 
check this out, disregarding constants. If I look at y squared, I think, oh, y squared. The derivative of y squared is 2y. There's the y. And we would be able to do this with another technique. And it might actually work out a little bit easier. So I'm saying that now just to prove to you, because I'm going to do it later, that you don't have to use one specific technique to get the same answer, to, to solve this differential equation. Right now, because we're kind of limited to homogeneous equations, I'm going to show you that because this has some interesting techniques as we go through. That's why we're doing it. Uh, but that's, I just want to let you know that. So let's try to make this homogeneous. We know we need y dx by itself. We know that every instance of y has to be y over x. Let's divide by x times y. And let's simplify as much as possible. You go, that, that doesn't look right. Well, you know what we can do if we have x over y? We can write that as a negative exponent. So take your fraction, reciprocate, and it's also going to change the sign of your exponent. So we have this dy dx, but we can write this as not x over y, but y over x to the negative 1, plus 3, and then y over x looks really good. Now we're ready to go. Now we know that our substitution can be v. We know if we solve for y, we can do an implicit derivative dy dx and now that lets us do sort of a double substitution we're going to replace dy dx with this piece we're going to replace each instance of y over x with v so this whole thing this thing is going to change dy dx is going to be this piece Right hand side, we'd have v to the negative 1 power plus 3v. All right. Hey, let's try to write this as separable. Let's see if that works. That's one technique that we're really familiar with. Well, in order for that to happen, we're going to have to group our v's on one side, create one fraction, then move it back. So let's, let's try that. So we'd have this x dv dx, no problem. Right hand side, we have v to the, you know what, let's write that as 1 over v. Plus 2v. No problem, combine some like terms. Well, that's not one fraction. And if I want to group this as all my v's times dv, and then x d, 1 over x dx, I'm going to have to make one fraction out of that. So we'll need a common denominator. If we multiply by v over v, we get our x dv dx. Right hand side, we'd get 1 plus 2v squared over v. Just v to the first power, because this whole thing, common denominator, you're not multiplying that when you add fractions. Now that's something we can deal with. Let's group our v's on one side dv. So reciprocal, sure. Divide by x, move our dx, no problem. Now we're ready. So the idea, try to make it homogeneous if you want to. Is there other ways? Yes, but we don't know them yet. So divide because it, by whatever this is, this xy. Why? Because homogeneous are predictable. We kind of know what's going to happen. We kind of know that we're going to be trying to get separable equations. We know how to deal with that. So we do it. Even though sometimes the techniques aren't great as far as our integrals, we do know what's going to happen with them. So we're going to reciprocate with our dv, reciprocate with our dx. Let's do an integral. On the right-hand side, piece of cake. Not bad at all. Left-hand side, this is not a separation of fractions. You can't separate that unless you do partial fractions. Not going to do that. We're going to do a substitution. So if u equals 2v squared plus 1, try something basic. Try the most basic technique. See if they work. Then du equals 4 v dv let's divide by four because right here we have the v dv that's fantastic and now we can make that substitution work so i'm going to just go right over here we get our integral of v dv that is our du over four 
we chose our whole denominator to be u. So here's our u, there's our u. V dv is du over 4. And so we can go ahead and change this integral. Left-hand side becomes this. Right-hand side was really basic. We didn't have to change it. And now we can integrate nicely. We know that that 1 fourth is going to stay there. Ln absolute value u. No problem. Right-hand side. Ln absolute value of x plus c sub 1, in case you have to start changing that arbitrary constant. Now, we got, we got like two resubstitutions. We have a u in there, but we use a u sub, so let's move that back to 2v squared plus 1. 2v squared plus 1 is never negative, so we don't really need those absolute values anymore here. Next up, maybe we start multiplying, I mean, well, unless you want to deal with the fourth root, let's multiply everything by four to get rid of the one fourth. I'm going to hang on to that four C sub one for just a bit, because I know I'm probably going to be using an, an exponential here and we're going to wrap all of that up in that uh, C. Well, another thing I might do, maybe I move this as an exponent so I can get that ln by itself. Now that looks pretty good. Let's do the E if the change, both of these is exponent on E, if we do that, so e, e to this whole thing. Well, we have exponents that are added that came from common basis being multiplied. So gone, gone, but we're going to get e to the 4c sub 1. I hope that makes sense. I hope you're following the algebra on this one. So take these as an exponential. We would get x to the 4th times, not plus, times, we had exponents. So that would be e to this term times e to this term. Let's call that whole thing the arbitrary constant c. Now we're almost done. Man, the only thing we've got to do now, let's solve for v as much as it's possible so we can just subtract 1. If you're thinking, why don't we divide by 2, you certainly could. But because we're going to be ending this implicitly anyway, um, we don't, I mean, we don't have to because we'd start getting, getting fractions out of that. So if you want to divide by 2, you can, but you start getting 1 half, things like that. So I'm going to leave it as 2v squared. But what we do have to do, we start with in terms of y. So we're going to need this back in terms of y. Since v equals y over x, the left-hand side becomes... Two y over x squared equals c x to the fourth minus one. Let's make this two y squared. Over x squared equals c to the fourth. Or sorry, c x to the fourth minus one. Oh man, other thing we could do, probably just multiply everything by x squared, we could do that. So multiplying, gone, c x to the sixth minus x squared. You could factor the x squared, you could have just multiplied the whole thing by x squared. You can also add x squared back if you don't like the minus. There's lots of different forms we can accept here. What we're not going to do is we're not going to solve for y, because you get the plus and minus, you have something that we don't really want to look at as far as our solution here. So implicitly defined. Y 
we just consider that one as our solution. So we're looking at it saying, could, could we solve this homogeneously or with a homogeneous equation? Yeah, yeah, we can. Some interesting techniques sometimes happen. Try some simple ones first before you get all crazy on your integrals. And then if you can solve for y, great. If you can't, it's okay to leave it implicit, especially when we get things like y squared. So that's about all we can do on that example. Let's move on to another one. We're going to start getting some, some tougher ones for these last few problems. Well, let's get moving. So we have another one. I'm going to show you how to do homogeneous, make this into a homogeneous form of this differential equation. We'll make our substitution. We'll go through it. A couple things that I want you to notice when we're going through this is how to deal with the square roots. Uh, we've seen it one time before, like how you make that happen. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, my ideas here, are, of course, when we deal with the integrals, try to make them as simple as possible. It's going to look like you're going to want to do one technique here, but refrain from that until you try something easier. So let's get started. I would actually really like it if you guys would try this on your own. Uh, try at least the first step. So try putting this in the form of a homogeneous equation. So can you get dy dx by itself? Try that. Can you simplify what you have? Try that. Try to simplify. See what happens. Think about what you want to happen. You want every instance of y to be in the form y over x. That looks really good right there. It doesn't look great here. So think about how you could make that happen. Could you define y as something that you can put inside the square root? Think, think about that. Think about what you could do to make, make it possible for you to combine those square roots. What could you do? Try it. Could you write this as the square root of y squared? We're always under the trying to get this idea of we want y over x, y over x, y. Even x over y will work because we have negative exponents at our, at our uh, disposal here. So y over x looks really good. The square root does not look really good. So let's see if we can make this y into the square root of y squared. Now we can make one, one big square root out of it. And if we make that into two different fractions, we get 4x squared over y squared plus y squared over y squared. Now that we have that down, can you simplify it? See if you can simplify these fractions. Remember what we want. We want y over x. So can you simplify y squared over y squared? Of course. Can you write this as y over x to some power? The reason why I'm asking you these questions at this point in this, this lesson is I want you asking yourself, when you, when you approach these problems like on your test or homework, I want you asking yourself these questions when you deal with these and try to make them into homogeneous equations. I want you asking, can I do this? Should I be doing this? How can I simplify? Am I getting the right thing? That's why I ask you these, even though you can't respond to me uh, verbally. Um, I, I want you to be thinking, thinking that way. So in my mind, I'm always asking those questions. So can I write this as y over x? Done. Can I write this as y over x? Probably, because I know that I can make this 4 times x over y squared. That's the same thing. Keep Kick out the 4. That's x over y squared plus 1. But because that's the reciprocal of what I want, if I reciprocate the fraction, all that happens is I change the sign of my exponent. Y over X, got it. 4, no problem. Y over X, yes, but to the negative 2 power. Reciprocate, change the sign. Plus 1. Now we're ready for our substitution. So can you do that? So once you have Y over X in every instance of Y, make your substitution. Try it. 
So v equals y over x, do your y equals, do your derivative of y, and then substitute for everything, two-part substitution. One for dy dx, one for every case of y over x. I should be trying that right now. So my head asks, am I ready for the substitution? Yes, I have y's over x's. Can I solve for y? Of course. Can I take a derivative of y so as to replace dy dx? Sure. Now we're ready. So this is going to become left-hand side is exactly what we found. Because we solve for dy dx, that's always the case for homogeneous equations. So left-hand side's that. Right-hand side, I'm going to replace v and v. So let's make sure that worked. dy dx? No. Use your substitution. dy dx? No, this thing. y over x? No, v. Plus sign? Sure. Square root? Sure. 4? Sure. y over x? No, v to the second, negative second power and then plus 1. I love it when this happens. Oh man, it's so nice. Avoid some, com some common denominators, avoids adding fractions. I love it when the v's cancel. Now the right-hand side might take a little bit of work. So we can write this as 4 over v squared plus 1. But that doesn't look really good. So let's try and see if we can make that a, a slightly better form. So 4v to the negative 2, sure, but that means 4 over v squared plus 1. Can you, and this happens a lot, when you have something over a variable squared plus a constant, can you make a common denominator? Can you combine this and simplify the denominator? So try that. Try getting a common denominator here. Try combining and then splitting up that square root for the numerator and denominator. On the numerator, we just get 4 plus v squared over v squared. And that happens a lot when you have constant over variable squared plus constant. You'll get a common denominator. You'll go ahead and add the numerators, but your denominator is a square inside of a square root. If you split that square root up, the square root's an exponent. Exponents distribute across operations that are right below them, so multiplication and division. So our, our square root distributes to the numerator and the denominator. But when we do the denominator, the square root of v squared is just v. Oh man, that looks so much better. That's something that we can do as a separable equation. Let's separate our variables. v is on one side dv, 1 over x on the other side dx. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. If I am, slow down the video. That was a joke. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of taking for granted that you, you at this point, understand we're reciprocating, understand we're reciprocating, understand we need dv and dx because it's a separable equation. We've spent just tons of time on that. Um, and then the integration techniques I slowed down for. So when we integrate both sides, right-hand side, just super easy. Left-hand side, some of you are going to really, really want to make this a trig sub because it looks like that form. Don't do that. All right. Try easier stuff before harder stuff. So when you look at it, is it basic? No. Can you separate the fractions and make it basic? No. Is it a substitution? Yes. That's how you should go through your integrals. Don't automatically jump to, it's got to be partial fractions with a trig sub. Whoa. Okay, you're going crazy. Don't do that, all right? Do something easier versus harder. Sometimes we're forced to trig sub, yeah. Sometimes we're forced to partial fraction, yeah. But that, those are last resorts. Try the easier stuff first. Here, all this takes is a nice little u sum. u is v squared plus 4. du is 2v dv divided by 2. And then we got it. We got a nice integral. We're going to have 1 
over the square root of u. So we'll write that as u to the 1 half. So u is v squared plus 4 square root of u. That's u to the 1 half. And then du over 2. If we write this appropriately, we'd have a 1 half. So that's the du over 2. Let's pull the 1 half out. We got an integral. We get u to the negative 1 half du. And we do a basic integral on that. That's kind of nice. So let's keep our 1 half. Let's do u to the, let's see, we add 1. Divide by the new exponent. 1 half and 1 half, gone. Right hand side, we get ln absolute value of x plus c. Let's put our u back. So our u was v squared plus 4. We know that's to the 1 half power. Oh, things we can do. Um, well, we could probably write that as a square root, couldn't we? So square root of v squared plus 4. Let's try to solve for v as much as possible. We could square both sides. Looks okay to me. Let's subtract 4. Now we're about as good as we can get before we start plugging back in that y over x. v is y over x, so we, we use that, that v twice. One to get away from y's, one to get back to y's. It just is always in conjunction with the y over x. So this will be y squared over x squared. I hope you see y. If you don't see y, it's right, it's right there. No, I'm just kidding. But I hope you see the, the reason, the fourth game, the reason why we have the square. We're squaring v, and so we're squaring y, and we're squaring x. On the right hand side, nothing's changed. Maybe we just multiply by x squared and call it good. So, x squared times uh, ln absolute value of x plus c squared minus 4x squared. Oh man. That's about it. You could see a different form. Um, sometimes we get that people would add back the 4x squared, or not even move in the first place. I like that one, but sometimes you'll get this. Where they say, I prefer to have that on one side. It's implicit anyway, so why not put them together and avoid the minus sign? Um, either way is, is really fine. So that's about it for that problem. Uh, we're going to move on. We have two more to do. They're, they're going to be, some of them are just, these last two are the roughest ones you're going to see. So I'm going to show you those techniques. They involve some partial fractions with their integrals, and we see that again. Uh, so hang on for them. All right, let's get going on this. I'm going to show you how to do this as a homogeneous equation. Um, there's going to be some rough parts in this, some things like, whoa, I forgot you could do that with integrals. And that's why we're doing these problems. Of course, it's pretty easy right now to just structure these as y over x everywhere and do your substitution. But I'm doing these examples because the integration techniques in them need some refreshing. Uh, sometimes you're just going to be missing that. So that's what we're going through. Just lots of practice. If you don't need it, fine. Move on to the next video when we talk about a different technique. Uh, but for right now, this, this is kind of this is kind of nice to be able to get through these and, and see exactly what's going on. So number one, does it look like a differential equation? Yeah. Does it look like a basic one? No. Can we do a substitution? We're going to try. Let's try to do this with homogeneous equations. So let's go ahead. Let's get everything on one side. Don't divide by y first. Subtract x first. We can do that. OK. Now we get to solve for dy dx. That's how the structure of homogeneous equations works. So let's divide by y.
Now, we've got a couple things going on. We've seen this at least two times before. We're going to take this and we go, well, let's make that into one big square root. We need the square root of y squared, so we're going to do that. But also, we don't really want x over y. We want y over x. So in doing that, we change the sign of our exponent. Reciprocate the fraction, change the sign of your exponent. Plus, but then we're going to get a big square root with x squared plus y squared. Let's see if I can do this for you. All over y squared. If this piece is the square root of y squared, then we'd have a giant square root of the same numerator divided by y squared, because that's now inside the square root. Let's simplify that. So negative, negative, y over x, y over x, negative 1 power, cool, plus big fat square root. We have x squared over y squared plus 1. We're separating the fractions. x squared over y squared, great, plus y squared over y squared, that's 1. No problem. Um, what else can we do? That doesn't look great, does it? Let's fix it. If we had x over, so this piece, x over y squared, that's what that is. That's x over y squared, but it doesn't fit what we want. We want y over x. Let's reciprocate it. It'll change the sign of our exponent. So x squared over y squared, x over y quantity squared, y over x to the negative 2 power. Even though that looks really nasty, that's when we can start substituting. So we know that every instance of y is now over x. We know that we can put v equals y over x. We know that if we solve for y, dy dx is going to be x times dv dx plus v. Not a problem. And now we can make our substitution. You should be trying that right now. See if you can substitute from here. Do your x dv plus dv dx plus v, and then v to the negative 1, v to the negative 2 plus 1. See if you can do that. So dy dx, not anymore. Negative x, y over x to negative 1, no, negative v to the negative 1. Plus square root of y over x to negative 2, no, v to the negative 2. Plus 1, still got plus 1. This looks awful. Let's go ahead and try to simplify some of this, maybe make it a little bit better. So x dv dx, no problem, that looks okay. Uh, let's subtract this. So let's subtract v. That'll be negative v. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna do it two steps, not much easier. Let's simplify this first. So negative v to the negative one, that's negative one over v. Let's write that as a as a fraction. Plus big square root. V to the negative two is one over v squared plus one. So this side stays the same. This is one over v but negative. This is one over v squared plus one. We're gonna do two things. I'm now going to subtract v on both sides. It's, it has no like terms right now. I'm going to make this a common denominator. So I'm going to do that first. So at the end of this, I'll have plus, let's see, 1 plus v squared over v squared. You should be trying that on your own. So 1 over v squared plus 1, 1 over v squared plus v squared over v squared, 1 plus v squared over v squared. I'd have a minus 1 over v. If I subtract v, I've got a negative v, and that's x dv dx. So x dv dx, got it. Subtract v, here's my minus v. I've got my minus 1 over v. Okay, I got my plus. I got my square root that I'm trying to simplify that a little bit. 
Now, let's simplify this. So we're going to keep the square root of the numerator, but the square root of the, the denominator simplifies. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Lots of algebra, right? Rise of fraction, rise of fraction, common denominator, simplify. This stayed the same all the way through. Subtract v, we got our minus v. Now, in order for this to be a separable equation and separate variables, we've got to have one fraction. So even though it's nasty, we're going to have to get a common denominator. This already has one, v and v, which is why we simplified. This needs it. So it's just a matter of multiplying by v. So let's think about that. This should be v squared over v. So negative v squared over v. We're basically just taking this and multiplying by v over v. So negative v squared over v minus 1 over v plus square root of v squared plus 1 over v. Let's put all of that on one fraction. So x dv dx. Yeah, it's gigantic fraction. All over v. Then on the numerator, we'd have negative v squared minus 1 plus square root of v squared plus 1. I'm going to write that just slightly differently before we start making this uh, into the separation of variables idea. I'm going to write my square root first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write v squared minus 1, but I'm going to factor out the negative. And here's why I'm doing that. If I have v squared plus 1, and I can make this look like v squared plus 1 by factoring out a negative, maybe a substitution will work when we integrate. So I factor the negative, it's change it to v squared plus 1. If you distribute, you see minus v squared minus 1. Same thing. That looks crazy. Let's go ahead, let's separate the variables. Let's put these on one side. So we know about reciprocal. We know about the dv. We know about dividing by x. We know about moving over our dx. Let's pause for just a minute. Nasty with you? Yep. Can you do it homogeneous? Yep. But it's going to take a lot of work. So divide everything by y. Notice on the y over x, we've got to have that. Get our y over x, make a square root. Simplify, okay, we can do that. Do our substitution as soon as you have y's over x's. Make those all v's, make this into x dv dx plus v. Okay, we got that, but we know that we need to get all of our v's together. Simplify our fraction, get a common denominator, simplify our square root, move over our v. Okay, we can do that. Make one fraction, get a common denominator, we can do that. Let's make it of a form where maybe the inside of our square root is the same as something else. That helps us with the substitution. And now we're ready for an integral. So when we integrate both sides, right side, super piece of cake, easy. Left side, you might be struggling with that one for a while because you go, I, man, I'd love to do a substitution, but especially if you have it like this. And can you imagine? Like if you had that, you go, what's my substitution? I, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Um, but if you structure it like this, you go, what's my substitution? I don't know, but maybe I try the thing that's the same. Maybe I try doing u equals v squared plus 1. Well, the derivative would be 2v dv. If I divide by 2, at least I have this piece. And what that would change to is, well, let's see. An integral of 
square root of u that's the ugliest u ever square root u minus u because they're both the same thing and that was what the one of the keys here is like what am i supposed to do if those are the same call them both u on the numerator you only get one because that v dv is all wrapped up in d over two now I'm going to take just a moment because this is also not a basic integral. So you can't just separate those fractions. So I'm going to take this off to the side. I'm going to do the integration. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And then we'll, we'll go through and, and, uh, and redo this. So hmm. what could we do? Maybe we factor out the square root of u. Let's see if that helps us. There's probably another, I'm thinking of another way to do it right now that might be okay also, but I don't want to go through it. I don't want to go through both ways. So I'm going to factor out the, I'm going to force it to factor out a square root u. So notice what we have here. If we factor out the square root of u, we're going to get square root of u times 1 gives us square root of u. Square root of u times square root of u gives us back u. And then we have a 1 half. I'm going to float that out front. I hope you're still with me on this. Now at this point, we're going to need another substitution. So if we do that, pick a different variable like w. Let's call w equal to u to the one half. Well, if we do that, when we take a derivative, we bring down the exponent. We have u to the negative one half, so one half u to the negative one half. Let's solve for that du, oh, well, Let's solve for du. Let's do it that way. So if we do that, multiply by 2. Do you see it? Do you see that this... This is in our integral right there. Here's the 1 over square root of u. Here's the du. This whole piece is right there. So when we do this substitution, we get the 1 half. We get the 1. We get the, this is no longer there. This, this and this is all wrapped up in 2dw. What we have is... Oh, you know what? Uh, let me change it for just, sorry, one, one thing. Let's do that. Let's change it to that because all that would happen is negative, 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 negative. And then we wrap this whole thing up as just a W. So let's say W is this whole piece. That, that works even better. Then we take a derivative of that. We go, okay, well, it's still, it's the one's gone. That's fantastic. So it's still negative one half this u to the negative one half power. So we'd have u to the one half. We bring that down, negative one half, subtract one, we got it. We're still solving for that du over one half power. So multiply by negative two, we got that. u over, sorry, one over u to the one half du. No problem. That's still negative two dw is one over square root of u. That's here, right there. It's just now we have over w. And that's fantastic. So that's pretty cool because now we see that our twos are gone. We get negative integral one over w dw. That equals negative ln absolute value w. <laughs> that's just the left side. And then we're going to have to go back and resubstitute. So I'm going to erase part of this board. I'm going to come back and do that. Just a little recap that we had here. Try to make these the same. That way your substitution works. Okay, so we got that. We can do our substitution. When we get down to here, factor, because then if we call this a different variable, we have another substitution. If this is w, derivative of 1 is 0. 
derivative of this is negative one half u to the negative one half. That's negative two dw equals one over u to the one half. This is one over u to the one half. We just put our negative two up there. I'm going to come back and do the rest of it in just just a minute. So I'm going to erase a bit a bit of the board. We're about done on this crazy thing. So we have erased most of it where we started. We've already kind of gone through that. So now we got down to the very end. We thought, man, this, uh, this integral looks nuts. Let's make it so that we can do one substitution. But that led to, uh, well, if we force this thing to factor, we can do another substitution. Choose this to be w. Derivative of w gives you negative 1 half u to the negative 1 half. Let's solve that for this negative 2 dw equals 1 over the square root of u du. 1 over the square root of u du. This piece is negative 2 dw. No problem. This whole thing was called w. We got it. The negative 2, oh, 2 canceled. We get negative integral 1 over w dw. And we know that that equals negative ln absolute value w. So, right hand side, super easy, ln x. Let's see. But now we've got to go back. So w was 1 minus the square root of u. Let's do that. So w1 minus square root of u. Got that. But u, u was v squared plus 1. Let's put that in there. Now, before we start going and plugging in for v, let's get as close to solving for v as we can. One thing we might want to do is move that negative. So multiply everything by negative here. Let's call that c sub 1, because we're certainly going to be changing that when we do these as exponentials. Um, other thing we might want to do before we get there, maybe move this negative up here. So ln absolute value 1 minus square root of v squared plus 1, and absolute value equals ln of, well, x to the negative 1 power would be absolute value of 1 over x minus c sub 1. Now, let's take both of these as expo exponents on E. Remember what we do with those exponents. If they're added or subtracted, they came from common bases being multiplied. So, we can look at this as absolute value of 1 minus square root of v squared plus 1. Right-hand side would be 1 over x. times, not minus, times e to the negative c sub 1. Now, let's wrap up the absolute values in the plus and minus. So let's drop the absolute value. We get 1 minus square root of v squared plus 1 equals plus or minus e to the negative c sub 1. Times 1 over x. Let's call this thing c. It is a constant. It's an arbitrary constant. So 1 minus square root of v squared plus 1 on the home stretch here, c over x. What we do from there, uh, the only thing that you really have to do is substitute in for your v. you got to have y squared over x squared here. So let's try that. Um, if we do We might want to simplify this. We've seen this a few times now. Let's get a common denominator. So 1 is x squared over x squared. So y squared over x squared plus x squared over x squared. That gives us y squared plus x squared over x squared. 
that equals c over x. And then because that's in a square root, because the denominator is a perfect power, well, perfect square, x squared, we can simplify the denominator. So 1 minus square root of y squared plus x squared all over x. And the reason why we're doing that is because when we multiply both sides by x, well, we can simplify and we can get this whole distribute x minus, if you distribute this, that x is going to cancel. Square root of y squared plus x squared equals c. And that's about the best that we can do on that one. So from here, simplify your fraction, just some algebra. Multiply both sides by x. This x gone, this x gone, this gets multiplied by x. That's about it. That's a nasty problem. So that's about as much as I can show you on that one. Uh, what we're going to do after this, we're going to do one last problem. It's going to involve some, some partial fractions. I want to give that to you, and then we'll call it good. Let's wrap up this video with one last example, one that involves a lot of different algebra techniques, integration techniques, um, not so much as far as setting it up. So we're going to show that this is a homogeneous equation. We're going to put it in the proper form. We're going to make our substitution, and we're going to see uh, some special integration, so some things that we sometimes forget about. So number one, differential equation, yeah, normal stuff, not really. Let's try homogeneous. Let's divide both sides by x squared minus y squared. Let's get the dy, dy dx by itself. Now, with our goal to be achieving this y over x look for every single term of y, um, we're going to need to divide by something. So both the numerator and denominator, but let's pick something smart. So instead of dividing by something random like x times y or something like that, let's divide everything by something that will not only get rid of that would not only put y over x, but also get rid of all the x's, like next to those, those y's, so something kind of nice. Otherwise, we mess around with simplifying this thing. So instead of just dividing everything by x times y, which is what this is, to try to get that to, to be uh, to 1 and getting everything down here, let's divide everything by x squared. If we divide everything by x squared, and this is what's really driving this, if I want y over x, I have y squared. Let's divide by x squared to get y over x quantity squared. So I'm looking here and doing that. What's nice about it is that when we divide everything by x squared, well, we end up getting 2xy over x squared all over x squared over x squared minus y squared over x squared, and lots of nice things simplify. On the numerator, we get just 2, and then, oh, hey, look at that, x, x squared, simplify, we just get y over x. I love that. That's already the form that I want. I'm going to put in parentheses. I'm going to know that's going to be v. On the denominator, x squared over x squared is 1. That's perfect y squared over x squared is y over y over x quantity squared. That's exactly what we're looking for. So by putting this in the proper form of solving for dy dx, we just pick some nice thing, some nice uh, divisor that we can put in there to, to simplify parts of our terms to get this y over x, however we can do that. Now we're ready. Now we're ready to say, let's let v equal y over x. y therefore equals vx. And dy dx is x times dv dx plus v. Let's change this. Let's substitute. Let's make this equal to this. Let's do every y over x equals to v. So we're going to get this x dv dx plus v equals, on the right-hand side, we've got 2v and not 2v. That was funny. 1 minus v squared. <clears throat> What's the next step, do you think? Well, I would probably just subtract v. I know I'm going to try to do separable equations here. So I want to get my v's all grouped together. So if we do that, we get x dv dx 
on the right hand side 2v over 1 minus v squared, but then we have this minus v. Okay, well, probably going to want to make a common denominator. So that will give us x, dv dx. Then we got this 2v. I'm never going to distribute that until I make one fraction. I do not want to mess up those signs. What I'm going to do, I'm going to distribute now. So 2v minus v plus v to the third power. 2v got it, minus v got it, plus v cubed, all over 1 minus v squared. I'm going to combine some like terms. I don't have any other x cubed, sorry, v cubed. But I do have another v, so v cubed plus 2v minus v is 1v. Over the other thing I'm going to do, I don't like the way that that denominator looks, so I'm going to factor out a negative. So if I do that, I'm going to get negative 1 plus v squared or v squared minus 1. Reason why is um, our integral is going to work a little bit better that way. I always like to put things in order with the first term positive if we can. It makes things a little bit nicer. And now we have it. We've got this fraction that includes all of our v's. This term x, we now can separate our equations, or separate our variables. So on the left hand side, we have a reciprocal, what we got? v squared minus 1. We've got v cubed plus v. We've got a dv. On the right hand side, we keep our constants or our signs. We have 1 over x dx. Man, I hope that's making sense to you. We reciprocate, keep our sign over here, keep our 1 over x, get that over there, get our dx over there, keep our dv. Now we're ready to do an integral. But we're going to rewrite this a little bit. Here's the reason why we're going to do that. When we take a look at this, we go, how in the world am I going to do that? Let's run through. Does it look like you can just separate the fractions? No, because your denominator has two terms. Does it look like we can do a basic substitution? You kind of want to, don't you? You want to say, hey, u is this, but then you get 3u squared plus 1. And that's no way we can match that up. So, not that. Can you do a trig sub? No, not really. Um, can you do a, a double substitution? It doesn't look like it either. When you get something like this and none of those other techniques work, this is where you're going to want to use partial fractions. So we're going to explore that for a little bit. So partial fractions say you need to factor your denominator. That's what it's all about. So factor your denominator. If we factor out v, our GCF, if we factor out v, we get v squared minus 1 over v times v squared plus 1. We are going to make these partial fractions. So here's how that looks if you don't remember that. So this is a, a big thing for us. Happens quite a bit in Calc 2. Happens here not as often, but occasionally. It's all about the setup with these partial fractions. So here's what you need to know. On your denominator, you're going to factor everything. Now, all polynomials can be factored into linear or irreducible quadratic factors. For every linear, those are power 1, you're going to get a constant over the linear. So it's always one less degree on your numerator. So for this v, you're going to create a fraction for every factor. Factors equal fractions. So we have two factors. We have v, we get v squared plus 1. Those go in the two denominators, no problem. The idea is we're kind of undoing the idea of a common fract uh, common denominator, so we're going to kind of use that in just a bit to break these up. So whatever your factor is, look at your degree. If your degree is 1, your numerator has to be 1 degree less than that. Well, what's a degree less than 1? 0. That's no x's. That's no v's. That's a constant. 
look at your irreducible quadratic. You can't factor it anymore. So irreducible quadratic has a power 2. Well, what's 1 less than power 2? It's power 1. Power 1. X to the first power. Oh, that's a linear. That's how partial fractions work. You go ahead and you, you factor denominator. Make a fraction for every factor. Look at your degree. Your numerator is one degree less than that. So for linear, you get constants, however many you have. Irreducible quadratics, you get linears, however many you have. Now the idea is you need a common denominator. So if I can make these denominators equal to this denominator, my numerators will have to be equal. What that comes down to is since these don't share common factors, I know that my common denominator would take a times this denominator, v squared plus 1 over v squared plus 1, bx plus c times this denominator, v over v. That would give me the common denominator I'm looking for. So most of the time, we just see it this way. But the reason why it works is because what you're really doing in practice is you're creating a common denominator on these two fractions and you're saying, hey, since this denominator, a times v squared plus 1 over v times v squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times v over v times v squared plus 1, the, since you have the common denominator here, if, these, if this is an equation and your denominators are the same, notice how on this numerator you get this thing, on this numerator you get this thing by common denominator, if your denominators are equal on a fraction, your numerators have to be equal on a fraction also. So we say, okay, just set your numerators equal. This is like the, hey, do partial fractions. Cut to, this is what you have. Why? Because you're just making a common denominator. That's it. Now, let's use some of our, our logic here. So if we were to distribute this, Uh, you know what, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, I'm so used to x's. You probably heard me say x. I do it almost subconsciously. It should be v's. This should be obvious at this point. So, uh, yeah, v squared plus 1 be v plus c over v squared plus 1. I'm sorry about the x. Probably going to happen. Uh, so multiply v squared plus 1, multiply b. Sure, our numerators are now equal. So this numerator with a times common denominator b, v plus c, common denominator, and now when we distribute, now when we distribute, we have a, v squared plus a, okay, b, v squared plus c, v. Let's group these things together. So I know that v squared minus 1, I have a, v squared plus b, v squared, if I factor out the v squared from that then these two terms make a plus bv squared plus cv plus a, and match that up with the terms over here. So if this is an equation, this is the only possible thing that could give you v squared. That means that a plus b has to equal your coefficient here. That's the only term that has to be squared in. So a plus b has to equal 1. This is the only term that has v. There are no terms that have v. So c can't be any number but 0. a is the only constant. Negative 1 is the only constant. So a has to be negative 1. But if you know that, then backtracking, negative 1 plus b would have to equal 1. b equals 2. So we've gone ahead and said, all right, so that integral now changes to this pair of fractions. So instead of having v squared minus 1 over v times v squared plus 1, we know that this is going to be a over v. So negative 1 over v, that's our a over v, plus sign bv. So 2v plus c. Oh, c is 0. That's fantastic over b squared plus 1. a over v, negative 1 over v. bv plus c over b squared plus 1, 
2v plus 0 over v squared plus 1. I'm going to erase this side. We're going to come back over here. We're going to finish that up, and we're almost done with the problem. That was kind of the biggest main idea here, is that partial fractions are still in play. You've got to be careful with them. All right, so coming back to finish off our problem, now that we had our partial fractions, we've determined that this integral separates into two fractions. Now we just have these two different integrals here. Pretty basic. Negative ln absolute value of v. We can do that. This guy over here, well, that's a u sub. So the derivative of v squared plus 1 is 2v. We know that we can do that. So let's do it pretty quickly. That's, that's nice. I mean, that's straight up exactly what we got right there. So v squared plus 1 equals 2v dv. That means that we have, well, the integral of negative 1 over v dv plus the integral of this is all wrapped up in 1. We have u du, because 2v dv is du. That's nice. On the right-hand side, let's just leave that integral for just a moment longer and do them all at the same time. So right here, we're going to have negative ln absolute value v, done, plus ln absolute value u. We'll come back and substitute that for v in a moment. Equals negative ln absolute value of x, got it, plus c1, because we're probably going to have some exponential up here. Let's go ahead. We know that u is v squared plus 1. I'm going to drop the absolute value since that's always positive anyway. Now let's start working on some other things. Let's, um, you know what, since there's two negatives here, let's just multiply everything by a negative. Let's also use some of our techniques of, of logarithms. Since we have logarithm minus logarithm, we can combine those as natural log of that fraction. Now let's do the exponential. So we'll take both of these as a power of e. We've done this many times before. We're going to get v over v squared plus 1 equals e to the ln absolute value of x is absolute value of x. But we'll get times e to the negative c sub 1. Exponents being added or subtracted comes from common bases being multiplied. Let's wrap up the absolute value in a plus. I'm going to write this quickly. Wrap up the absolute value in a plus or minus e to the negative c sub 1 times x. That's c. Wow. Almost done. There's only one more thing we've got to do. We've got to change our v back into y over x. So every place we see v, we get y over x. Just like every place we saw y over x, we got v. So we get this complex fraction. If you ever had an intermediate algebra class, you're like, why in the world do we ever deal with complex fractions? Right there. I don't know if you said it just like that, but maybe. Uh, right there, because it happens quite a bit. Um, so let's multiply everything by the common denominator. Both sides, both top and bottom, everything by the LCD of x squared. So we multiply by, I'm sorry, uh, on this side, uh, top and bottom by x squared. Not the, not the right-hand side, I misspoke there. So on the top, we're going to get this x squared over x. That's going to simplify. That's going to give us x times y. On the denominator, remember that this distributes. So when we distribute, we'll get y squared plus x squared. Equals c times x. Oh, what else do I want to do? Oh, that's nice. Look at this. 
if we consider this to be not x times, well, I'll write it again, not x times y, but x times y over y squared plus x squared, if x is not equal to zero, we can divide both sides by x. Or think about it, I multiply x to the negative one. And then last thing, let's just multiply both sides by y squared plus x squared. That's about as pretty as we can make it. So here we're dividing by x, that's gone, provided x is not zero, and then we're good to go. So that's it. That's, that's how to solve these homogeneous equations. Uh, we, we always make sure that we have y over x. We always change that into v for every instance of y. All the y's have to be wrapped up. We always solve for y for a derivative, and then dy dx is always the same thing. Then we're trying to usually make these into separable equations. Some of our other techniques deal with linear, which is why I had you kind of think through it. Is it separable? Is it linear? Is it basic integration? Because other techniques will go more towards those ideas like linear and, and, um, and basic integration. So we'll see that in other videos. Right now, I hope I've done a good job of explaining how to work with these homogeneous equations and why it works with our substitution technique. So I'll see you for a couple of the videos. We have several more substitution techniques to learn. So exciting times. Everything we learn makes it a little bit nicer to deal with differential equations. Okay, back to domain, and I just want you thinking about some issues that's happening when you are making these differential equations fit the technique you're trying to. And so I'm always going to try to put this back in your head for you. So let's look back at some examples. These were uh, almost all of the examples that we just did in this video. But let's look back at what happened when we tried to put these in the proper form for a homogeneous equation. Uh, number one, well, if you're going to divide by something, that something cannot be zero. So when you're dividing by x plus y, we go, okay, then x plus y, put the condition somewhere in your problem that says, when I'm doing this to make this fit because I have to, I'm understanding that I'm doing this with the condition that x plus y cannot be equal to zero. This is saying, um, I got to do it, solve it, but I can't let this happen because that, that, that would break our domain. We, so we'd have something that's undefined. This can't happen. So is it okay to put conditions on your domain when you're solving these? Yes, because we have to in order to use this, this certain technique. So whatever you're doing to modify your original differential equation, if you're dividing by variables, just make sure those that expression that you're dividing by cannot equal zero. Now, furthermore, because we're trying to make this homogeneous, at some point we're going to be divided by x. So that x also can't equal zero. Just be careful of those things when you're, when you're going through these. Maybe you can look at the next few examples and just quickly identify what's, what's going on. So uh, down here, yeah, we're, we're dividing. Look at your denominator. Just make sure every factor cannot equal zero. x can't equal zero. x plus y, again, can't equal zero. So when you're seeing a lot of these restrictions, like, where is this coming from? Um, those, are, those are coming from two, two places, typically. Number one is that you you're modifying your differential equation to make it fit some technique. Here it's homogeneous, and so we're dividing, and then we're also dividing something by x, and so that, that x can never be zero. Um, with linear, we were also doing something with an integrating factor. So that, that came about as well as far as a domain restriction. How about the next one? Man, we don't have to do anything to see what's going to happen here. You look right there at that fraction. You go, hey, uh, <laughs> x can't be zero. And by defining that, you get to divide by x squared without any additional constrict, uh, restrictions because you already did that. So that, that's the idea. Just be thinking through, if I'm dividing, if I have fractions, my denominator cannot be zero for these homogeneous equations. Um, we, we're not super concerned about being greater than zero because of some reason I explained in the last video that, well, with your homogeneous, they're always separable. We're typically getting an E to a C, and we can put the plus and minus from the absolute value in front, wrap that all up in a big constant. Or what we can do um, is, is notice that the absolute value is oftentimes contained in another function that we wouldn't be able to simplify or combine our x's with anyhow. So we're not very much worried about that like we were with linear. Uh, this is the last, last three. You're obviously going to be divided by x, y. So neither x 
or y can equal zero by the zero product property. If either one of those is zero, the denominator is zero. So just show those restrictions. We're just, when we're modifying our differential equations, sometimes we're doing things that could cause us problems if we're not saying what we can't have. It's a weird way to say it. Uh, but you're going, yeah, I obviously, I obviously can't, can't, have x or y be zero. And, and for the reason that this is obvious to a lot of people, some, some books, uh, a lot of them, uh, and some teachers, a lot of them, don't even talk about it because that frankly they, they are a little obvious when you but you need to see them for one time for them to be obvious to you. You go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can't have zero. Okay, that makes sense. I can't have zero here. Um, now we, we should always write that, and, and it's a it's kind of a failing of our, our textbooks and some of these teachers and, and myself because I was focused only on um, on the technique at first. I did that for a reason. I wanted you to master the technique, get that in your head, and then realize that this stuff is happening. When we master the technique first, then we can go through and and get the finer points. Otherwise, when we try to get the finer points as we're learning the technique for a lot of students, not everybody, but for a lot of students, that's hard because it feels like the lecture's being broken up. And so we master technique, but these things are also important. We need to understand that when we modify a differential equation, that some problems can be occurring in the domain. We have to show what those problems are. Why don't you look at the last two and see what you would do with that? Obviously, we're divide, dividing x squared minus y squared. What's that? What can't that be? Show it. It's as easy as that. Lastly, because we're going to be dividing everything by x squared next, like we did in that example, we go, okay, well, um, if x squared can't equal 0, x can't equal 0. And so we're showing the conditions that we need in order to use our technique. That's all we're doing. Okay, last one. I, I save this one for last because this is interesting. Um, I'm, it's, it's kind of, it's really clear to most people that, well, I mean, you're divided by y. Y can't equal 0. If I need the homogeneous form of this, then when I reciprocate this to get my negative exponent, x can equal 0. But why in the world would they have y greater than 0? And it's for what you have to do to simplify this. So right down here, man, I taught this in Calc 1. I remember it vividly because it's in limits. And when, I, when I'm teaching it, it's really kind of awkward because you need to look at where your limit's going and then say, can I just write y equals the square root of y squared? Yes and no. Yes, that's true. But because that square takes any negative y's and makes them positive, we have to look back at what the definition of the square root of y squared is. Really, with any even radical, when you match a power of the root and you simplify it, if that radical is even, you actually get this. You get the absolute value of y. That's the definition of the square root of y squared. You're going to get the absolute value of y. So it depends on what y is. Now, obviously, it's, that's going to be positive no matter what, but we have to show that y is greater than 0 in order to avoid the absolute value. And back in limits, it was this, okay, well, where are we going to positive infinity or negative infinity? And that let me choose whether we would have positive y or negative y there. And that, that was the whole, the whole case. So now we're th thinking, okay, I need this to be in that square root. I've got to have a square root around it. Let's just make it square root of y squared. Great. But to avoid the absolute value, are you guys understanding like the kind of the theme here? To avoid the absolute value, just like in linear, to avoid the absolute value, just like we did with the integrating factor, to avoid the absolute value, man, just do this. Make it greater than zero. Then you're dividing by something that's not zero. And when you're using these techniques to simplify, when you're using the techniques for the integrating factor, you're avoiding the absolute value. It saves a lot of headache later with simplifying uh, everything else. Because some of our y's would have an absolute value if we didn't do that. And some of our y's wouldn't. That would be an issue. So I hope that you're understanding that. Um, that we, when we're, when we're doing these things, we're... Um, we're restricting some of our domains just to make our technique work. Uh, there's only one more video I'm going to do this on for a while, so hopefully this is helping you understand some of the finer points when we're going through this.